Welcome to the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. We've got a fast-paced hour of fishing, hunting, and conservation covering the nation and the Northwest, including 13 extra minutes of local content you'll only hear on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. It's Saturday morning, and I'm glad you're here because at the bottom of the hour, we're going to head down towards Tillamook on Oregon's north coast and check in with guide Pat Abel to see how the winter steelhead fishing going there. You'll want to stick around for the end of the show, too, when we bring you an extended Max Minute featuring guide Shelby Ross, owner of Ross Outdoor Adventures. He's fished a lot of different waters in eastern Washington for walleye, and he'll share some of the wackier ways he's managed to catch them over the years. But before we get there, let's tell you what's hot. And What's Not, brought to you by your Puget Sound area sportsman's warehouse stores in Silverdale, Federal Way, Puyallup, and Everett, which are hosting a special ladies' night on April 11th. There's going to be games, prizes, and discounts all for the ladies. You aren't going to want to miss this because... The folks at Sportsman's Warehouse, they appreciate you and want you fishing, hunting, and camping too. We're going to start off with NorthwestFisherReports.com. We've got big news from them. They are coming to a television screen near you. Starting April 6th, they will be airing Saturdays at 5 p.m. on Joe TV Channel 22 and Sundays at 5 p.m. on Q13 Fox. Congratulations, Mike Carey, Rob Holman, and Aaron Borg for making it onto the small screen in the Seattle market. We're looking forward to seeing your on-air adventures for 30 minutes every week starting a week from now. Another new show to tell you about is Fish Hunt Northwest. This one is seen on YouTube every Thursday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. And the premiere episode was great. It's hosted by Dwayne England, who formerly co-hosted Northwest Wild Country, heard right here on Seattle Sports Radio KJR. And he's joined by several great co-hosts to include his lovely wife, Sherry. Together, they bring you the latest in fishing and hunting, as well as some great wild fish and game cooking too. Check it out this Thursday or catch the last episode on their YouTube channel, Fish Hunt Northwest. In other news, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife website has got a brand new look, and I've got to admit, it looks pretty good. I was checking the latest published steelhead fishing reports from the Olympic Peninsula, and if you're looking to catch and release wild steelhead, your best bet is the Solduck River, where the catch rate was nearly two fish per angler as of March 21st. If you prefer fishing the saltwater, Marine Area 6 was producing well last weekend, and anglers were averaging a salmon or better out there. Don't forget Marine Area 5 off of CQ either, where Tom Burlingame with XL Fishing Charters reported a lights-out fishing trip for salmon when we chatted with him last weekend. Speaking of that new and improved WDFW website, that is one place you can go to renew your fishing and hunting license, as well as your local Sportsman's Warehouse store, of course, where you have the option of not just renewing your license, but replenishing your tackle for spring fishing and ammo for turkey hunting. And if you are a hunter, consider taking a kit out for the youth turkey hunting opener next weekend, which would also be a great chance for you to scout places to go for the general spring turkey opener on the 15th. Finally, a note about the rollbacks to the Columbia River fishery reforms that we've been reporting on the last couple of weeks. We reached out to Governor Jay Inslee's office two weeks ago asking for comment about this decision made by his appointed Fish and Wildlife Commission, which seems to be at odds with the goal of increasing salmon numbers for our endangered southern resident orca whales. The same whales that he is so interested in saving, he rolled out a multi-billion dollar plan to do so just a couple of months ago. Unfortunately, we received no reply at all from our governor. I don't know, maybe he's focused on other things these days. It's hard to say. And with that, you now know what's hot and what's not here in the Pacific Northwest. That's your first local shot of the outdoors. Now let's see what's going on across the nation.
Ready for more local fishing and hunting? You got it. It's the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. Right here on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. It's time to head down towards Tillamook, Oregon. That's where Pat Abel, the owner of Pat Abel Guide Service, has been chasing after those winter steelhead in those Tillamook area rivers. Pat, welcome to the show. How's the fishing been the last couple weeks? Well, thank you. Um, It's been kind of tough. We've had some low water conditions. So what we're doing is we're fishing very light, light tackle. And um, right now we have some snow melt, so the rivers are starting to come up where they're fishable. And right now we're starting to see a lot of these broodstock and the big natives coming in in March. I'll personally fish this till the second week of April, and then I'll switch everything over to spring snook for the valley. Right now the only thing I could say is you want to run light tackle. All right, so there's five rivers in your area. What are probably the top two you would recommend in the next couple of weeks? The Nestucca and the Wilson. And why do you say that? Because they're the broodstock program. And when it comes to these broodstock steelhead, and the natives for that matter, I mean, like you said, this is the prime time for the big ones. How big are we talking? Anywhere from 15 to 20 pounds. Folks, that is the steelhead of a lifetime. That would be great to take. So next question for you, Pat. Do you have any openings between now and the middle of April? I do after April 8th. After April 8th, you said? Yes. All right. Well, folks, here's what you want to do. If you want to go fishing with Pat, just go to his website. It's Pat Abel. That's spelled A-B-E-L, guideservice.com. Pat Abel, guideservice.com. Steelhead fishing's been a little tough here in the Northwest this year, and it's also a little tough down there. But as you just heard, things are looking up for the end of the season. And if you want to hook into a 15 to 20 pounder, this is your chance. And the rivers are less crowded because everyone's going salmon fishing on the Willamette and the Columbia. Go to PatAbleGuideService.com. And folks, if you need a place to stay while you're down there, Tillamook has plenty of places for you. Great places to stay, great places to eat. Check out TillamookCoast.com for details. One of those accommodations, by the way, is the Garibaldi House. And if you book a trip with Pat, you'll get 15% off your stay. Plus, the breakfast, Pat tells me, is absolutely worth it in and of itself. Pat, thanks for sharing this fishery report with us this weekend on America Outdoors Radio. You're welcome. Anytime. NorthwestFishingReports.com is the Northwest's largest fishing reports website, featuring well over 50,000 fishing reports, videos, articles, and more, all 100% free. Catch more fish with Northwest Fishing Reports. Log on today. I'm Bob Loomis, and I fish for walleye. Sometimes when I'm out on the water, I feel like a destroyer captain hunting for targets with my electronics. I'm not hunting submarines, though. I'm hunting fish, and when I find that big one on the fish finder, I want to make sure she's going to bite. That's where the Smile Blade Slow Death Rig from Max Lure comes in. The Smile Blade spins and flashes at ultra-slow speeds, and the one-of-a-kind red hook keeps that bait moving in a way the fish can't resist. It's the Smile Blade Slow Death Rig, only from Max Lure. Don't leave yet. We've got one more local shot of fishing and hunting to wrap up the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. It's time for another Max Minute. And with us again is Max Pro Guide, Shelby Ross, the owner of Ross Outdoor Adventures, offering walleye fishing trips on several eastern Washington reservoirs. Shelby, question for you. What's the most oddball way you've ever caught a walleye? Probably fly fishing for bass. Go on. I had a customer wanted to book a uh, bass fishing trip with fly gear. He brings his own gear. I'm not a fly fishing uh, expert by any stretch. And first fish to the boats, 19-inch walleye. Okay, that definitely qualifies as oddball. Uh, What about some tactics that we don't use in the Northwest that are used in other places that we would never think of doing? In the Midwest, on some uh, reservoirs with uh, flooded timber, curling uh, spinnerbaits over the top of the timber has uh, produced some tournament winds. That also qualifies as oddball. And getting back to the Northwest, you know, come spring, especially April, May time frame, when that water's really warming up, are there some tactics folks ought to be using that they're probably not? There's a window every year, late April, early May, when a uh, black or green woolly bugger trolled behind a bottom bouncer has been deadly. And I just 
forgot to even play with it this last year but in years past it has uh, outproduced any other method that we've had for a window we don't know i'm not a fly fishing expert we think it uh, matches a hatch of the dragonfly and let's not forget crankbaits in shallow water that's a tried and true method up at banks lake isn't it at Banks Lake as well as Moses Lake in the springtime. And uh, it uh, even if it doesn't produce the fish, it helps you locate them. If they don't bite on the crankbaits, you've covered a bunch of ground. You can go back and fish a smile blade, spinner, nightcrawler, and uh, catch them. There you go, folks. Some very different ways to reel in walleye. If what you're normally doing isn't working, give one of these methods a try. You might just surprise yourself and everybody else on the boat. And one more thing, too, folks. If you want to book a trip with Shelby Ross, just go to his website. It's rossoutdooradventures.com. That's rossoutdooradventures.com. Thanks, Shelby. Thanks for having me, John. That's all for this week, but don't worry. We'll do it all again next Saturday morning from 7 to 8, right here on Seattle's Sports Radio, 950 KJR.